She was up. Joining me now is Republican Arizona Senator Jeff Flake, author of the new book, Conscience of a Conservative, A Rejection of Destructive Politics and a Return to Principle, and uh, with a, uh, an echo of Barry Goldwater from Arizona, That's uh, very one of your mentors. An homage to, to Barry Goldwater. And, you know, as we talk about this, is this your declaration of independence from the Trump Republican Party? No, it's, it's an affirmation of uh, what conservatism means, I believe. Um, I think that uh, Barry Goldwater, in his time, thought that uh, Republicanism, conservatism, had been compromised by the New Deal. And I think today it's been compromised by populism and uh, protectionism. And I think we've got to get it back if we want to be a governing majority. Um, are you considering... First of all, running for president. No, is this I'm, that, is this I'm running for re-election right Running now. for re-election. <laughs> and there, is, there was a question at the White House briefing yesterday as to right. whether the president would want to primary you because of your independence from him and your votes against him. And this was Sarah Huckabee Sanders' response. I'm not sure about any potential... Uh, funding of a campaign, but I think that Senator Flake would serve his constituents much better if he was less focused on writing a book and attacking the president and passing legislation. And your response to her, or to that? Well, uh, senators aren't meant to be rubber stamps of any president. Um, I've agreed with this president. He put forward a great Supreme Court nominee. I helped shepherd that through the Judiciary Committee and the Senate. I think he's done good things on regulatory policy. I think his instincts on tax policy are good. Uh, but uh, and other things I disagree with uh, on free trade. I'm very much a, a free trader. I believe that NAFTA has served us very well and ought to be continued. I, I, I'm disappointed that we withdrew from the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. But uh, I haven't always agreed with every Republican president. I oppose President Bush's No Child Left Behind, the prescription drug benefit. Uh, but still, I've supported most of the things he did. And I think that's what uh, voters of Arizona expect me to do. Uh, one of the things you wrote in the book is, Donald Trump is not the source code for our obsession with the politics of personal des destruction. Our crisis has many fathers. Right. So it precedes him. You bet. You bet. I, I served in, in the House for 12 years, uh, 2001 to 2012. And during that time, I mean, we had uh, Republicans standing up during the State of the Union address yelling, you lie. Um, we, we've, we've had, uh, you know, a lot of things which were breaches of decorum and, and bad manners uh, long before uh, this, this last campaign. I am concerned about the level that it's gone to now. And when we know that uh, we have big issues to tackle, our debt and our deficit, uh, health care and foreign policy, we know that we need to sit across the aisle, work with our colleagues across the aisle, and, and if we assume the, the worst in them and ascribe poor motives to our political opponents, uh, we'll never do that and we won't achieve conservative ends. Well, and one of the things that the president has perhaps unwittingly managed to do is to unite Congress, both houses, both parties, a nearly unanimous vote on sanctions. Right. And in his signing uh, statements yesterday, he criticized Congress more than he criticized Vladimir Putin, who the sanctions are directed against. He also, we now know, in his first phone call, with the Australian Prime Minister back in January, said very angrily, I've had it. I've been making these calls all day. This is the most unpleasant call all day. Putin was a pleasant call. This is ridiculous. Mm. I think uh, to be conservative, uh, one, you have, need to adhere to conservative policy. But it also means something in terms of comportment and demeanor. And in foreign policy, it's very important that we have a steady posture, uh, something that's consistent and predictable. That's conservative. And, and I'm concerned that uh, we've strayed from that. And what concerns do you have, similar to the, the concerns that were expressed by the sanctions vote, about any attempt to get rid of Bob Mueller? Because there's now a talk of legislation, I talked to Chris Coons yesterday about it, uh, possibly bipartisan legislation to either hire him or put some language in the appropriations. Well, I think that if he were to be removed, um, however it's done by the assistant attorney general or a new one, uh, Congress would, uh, would assert its prerogatives. And, and that would mean hiring a, a special prosecutor, and that might even be Bob Mueller. And in fact, there's also reporting, NBC News reporting exclusively that there's real disagreement, the president getting angry at the generals, Mattis uh, very upset after a national security meeting two weeks ago where he's demanding, the president's demanding that 
General Nicholson, who is running the war, the commander in Afghanistan, be fired? because he's not winning the war. I haven't heard any of that. We did have a briefing yesterday with uh, General Mattis and uh, Secretary Tillerson, and boy, I, I am glad they are where they are. They are they were stellar choices, and I think they're doing a good job. Uh, at the same time, of course, John Kelly trying to reassert some discipline right. at the White House and reassuring Attorney General Sessions that he's not about to be hired. Right. So far, if, that, if those reports are true, I'm, I'm heartened. I think we all are. Uh, that would, it would not go over well in the Senate if Jeff Sessions were removed. Um, because, I mean, the, the purpose has been stated for which he would be removed because he recused himself. And uh, I think that he did the right thing. He, did, he didn't have a choice. Uh, uh, he needed to recuse himself, and he did. So I, I hope that he stays. Uh, is there concern in the Senate about the lack of uh, accomplishment as you about to leave for the work period or whatever we want to call the break in August? When you come back in September, you've got the debt ceiling. That's going to be a tough mm -hmm. vote. Um, you've got appropriation right. bills pending. You know better than I. You've got one more vote today before you all right. leave town. Um, but how, what is the spirit in Congress right now? You know, we would have liked to have achieved uh, more things, obviously. We're going to need to have a busy fall. But I, I think if there's any silver lining in all of this, we have recognized, at least on health care, the limits of what one party can do on its own. And that will force us, I hope, uh, to sit down, go through regular order, sit down with our colleagues across the aisle and actually solve something. Because the bigger issues, uh, as I mentioned before, the, our debt and our deficit, that's going to require uh, some kind of grand bargain, uh, something along the lines of a Simpson-Bowles kind of approach. And no one party in control of both chambers in the White House is going to risk that on their own. Uh, you, you have to reach across the aisle, and, and, and that it is a conservative thing to solve that problem. But we won't do that if we continue to believe that we can do it all on our, uh, by ourselves as Republicans. We have to reach across the aisle. I just want to close with another quote from the book. Uh, the conscience of a conservative, the homage to Barry Goldwater, as you point out. Uh, you wrote, we conservatives have maintained an unnerving silence as instability has ensued. To carry on in the spring of 2017 as if what was happening was anything approaching normalcy required a determined suspension of critical faculties and tremendous powers of denial. Right. I what, think the essence what are you hoping of, to achieve with that? Call? Well, uh, the essence of conservatism is steady uh, comportment. You you take the timeless principles that have worked in the past, and you hew to them. You stick to them, and uh, you know the kind of chaos that we've seen, uh, and the, the chaos in the White House, and frankly dysfunction uh, in the House and the Senate that has stretched over a couple of decades. Uh, that's just not a recipe for uh, a bright future. So I, I hope that we can change. I hope that we can settle down and, and go back to the principles that have served us well for so long. Well, as you return to Arizona in the coming days, um, if you have the occasion, please give our best to your colleague, John McCain. I certainly will. Thank you so much. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.